Well, we, we will now start the next or the third uh, surfactant mediated separation process. That is the uh, liquid membranes. Previously, we have discussed two more that was the cloud point extraction and Weinstein and Stalter filtration. Now, we will talk about the liquid membranes. And in this chapter, we will be talking about the emulsion liquid membranes only. There are two things, there are uh, two liquid membranes one is the supported liquid membrane, another is the emulsion liquid membrane. And we will be talking about the emulsion liquid membranes only. Okay, so, it is basically a liquid phase involving an emulsion configuration, a liquid phase that has emulsion configuration and it is basically a double emulsion. That means, you must be having a system like water, oil, water or oil, water, oil system. But we will be generally talking about the water, oil, water system. We will be talking about this system. We will not be talking about the oil, water, oil, oil system. Now, for water, oil, water system, The oil phase separates two aqueous phases. Okay. The oil phase separates two aqueous phases, and this oil phase is known as the membrane. And since the oil is in liquid phase, it is called a liquid membrane. It is called a liquid membrane. Now, surfactants are used for stabilizing the emulsions. So, one, one uses the surface active agents to stabilize the emulsion ok. So, we will just look into some of the applications of the liquid membrane systems. application of liquid membrane system. So, you, it is a uh, specific separation and extraction of metal ions or um, uh, uh, generally the metal ions. For example, removal of zinc from waste water in rayon industry. Number two, removal of phenol, these are carcinogenic phenol, aniline, uh, you know, phenolic compounds like metanitrophenol, paranitrophenol, they are all obtained in the refineries, in the areas around refineries. Removal of phenolic compounds, so it is a group of compounds, phenolic compounds, they are carcinogenic in nature from waste water. Recovery of nickel from electroplating solution uh, 
removal of heavy metals so on and so forth so there are lots of uh, you know um, uh, inorganics can be removed by using liquid membranes there are lots of organics can be used can be can be can be removed using the liquid membranes as well now next we will see how <laughs> these liquid membranes are prepared preparation method first you have to prepare the emulsion between two immiscible phases okay prepare the emulsion between two immiscible phases that means oil and water aqueous and there are there are equipments called emulsifier what is emulsifier it's nothing but a tank which is attached to a stirrer and it's a it, its stirring speed is pretty high okay so basically you mix two phases and put it under high stirring and the emulsion globules will be formed then once the emulsion is produced the emulsion phase is dispersed in a third continuous phase under constant stirring and the stirring will be here in the order of around 20 10000 rpm in that order and second the when the emulsion is produced the emulsion is dispersed that means you place it in a in a, in a continuous phase another aqueous phase may be dispersed in a third phase third continuous phase under constant stirring and in this case the stirring speed will be much much lower lower and it will be in the order of let's say 300 to 400 rpm in that order of magnitude okay now membrane phase is the liquid phase that separates the encapsulate internal uh, internal droplets in the emulsion from the external phase so what is the membrane phase membrane phase is the liquid phase that separates the trapped or encapsulated internal phase from external phase. So, in the emulsion the oil will be in a will be uh, the, the aqueous phase will be encapsulated within the oil phase. Now, you pay to put this bigger globule the oil oil droplet which is, which is encapsulating the encapsulated in the inner phase into the outer phase. So, oil will be separating the outer aqueous phase from the inner outer phase. Okay. Now, uh, the you have to use the surfactants uh, or additives are used surfactants which are known as the generally the additives can be used to stabilize the emulsions otherwise the emulsions will be will be broken typical size of internal droplets are 1 to 3 micron On the other hand, the typical size of emulsion globule will be 100 to 2000 micron. So, basically you will be having an emulsion globule something like this. Okay. and within here you, co you contain various 
internal droplets okay? and you will be having an outer phase. So, this is the oil phase, this is the internal aqueous phase and the outside is the external aqueous phase. Okay. And this is an emulsion globule that means, it has a size of around 100 to 2000 micron. On the other hand, each of these globules will be containing number of internal uh, globules or the inner phase uh, internal droplets which will be in the size in the order of 1 to 3 micron. Okay. So, uh, so, basically uh, you will be having a liquid membrane system and this oil phase is called the liquid membrane that separates the internal aqueous phase from the external aqueous phase. Okay. Typically, the internal phase contains some species. It contains a species that reacts with the pollutant, so that the concentration of the pollutant within the internal phase will be minimum. So, that, that means, you are you are maintaining a maximum driving force during the system. Okay. Then, what, what, the, what it does that the, um, uh, the pollutant diffuses diffuses the basically the pollutant is present in the external aqueous phase that means first you have to produce an emulsion then you place the emulsion into the pollutant containing external phase okay so what the pollutant will do now the pollutant diffusing diffuses from external phase to the internal phase through the membrane or the liquid phase, the oil phase through oil phase. Okay. So, when it reaches the internal phase, it, it reacts with the species present in the internal phase. So, in internal phase, the pollutant that means, solute pollutant reacts with internal phase particular component present in the internal phase. Now, the product of that react, uh, reaction will be larger in size, it cannot diffuse out. Okay. So, so, so what, what in essence it will do? So, therefore, the external phase after some time this external phase will have less concentration of pollutants. Now, since the, so the, therefore, after some time all the pollutants from the external phase will diffuse through the membrane phase and going into the internal phase within the emulsion globules. So, therefore, you will be having after some time you will be having a having emulsion various emulsion globules which are loaded with the pollutant. Now, since these emulsion globules are larger in size, you can separate them out by using an ordinary filter paper. Okay. So, the in the product in the filtrate what will be having you will be having you will be having the external phase which will be having less concentration of the pollutant or which will be lean in the pollutant. So, thus the emulsion liquid membrane occurs uh, or works. Okay. So, let us talk about the uh, one particular example e emulsion liquid membrane for phenol removal. Now, your internal phase will be basically produced by oil plus NaOH solution. So, you prepare the emulsion 
by adding a fixed com fixed volume of oil and fixed volume of NaOH solution and then under high stirring the emulsion will be prepared. The emulsion globule will be having various smaller spheres of NaOH th those will be encapsulating the NaOH solution and this will be the oil phase. Okay. Now, when you place this emulsion in an aqueous phase, uh, then we place the emulsion in a uh, you know aqueous phase of aqueous phase containing phenol let us say. What phenol does? Phenol diffuses through the membrane phase let us say this is phenol, this phenol diffuses through the oil phase or the membrane phase it reaches into the sodium hydroxide the inner phase and sodium hydroxide reacts with phenol to form sodium phenolate. This sodium phenolate being larger in size they, they are the sodium phenolate is insoluble in the liquid phase. Okay. This is insoluble. In, in oil phase. So, what it does? It is basically being it remains trapped within the emulsion globule. So, all of the inner phase will be having the sodium phenolate and those will be trapped within the inner phase because they cannot come out because it is insoluble in the oil phase. Now, because of this reaction the concentration of what is the concentration of the phenol in the inner phase? The concentration of phenol in the inner phase will be equal to 0 and the concentration of phenol outside because it, there is no phenol present in the inner phase it is only sodium phenolate and phenol is present in the outer outer uh, continuous phase. So, it maintains the maximum concentration gradient that means C out minus 0. So, it maintains the maximum concentration gradient across the inner phase and the outer phase and phenol will keep on diffusing through them through the oil phase. So, therefore, after some times this emulsion globules will be loaded by solute phenol and these emulsion globules can be separated by a filter paper and you will be getting the water which will be very lean in phenol concentration. Okay. That is the typical fundamental principle of emulsion liquid membrane. Now, let us look into the driving forces and facilitated mechanism. There are two types of facilitation one can have this is one is type 1 facilitation in type 1 we have a reactant present in the inner phase number 1 so, I am just writing the salient features. So, therefore, this reactant reacts with the solute. So, therefore, the solute concentration in inner phase is 0. So, you maintain the maximum concentration gradient. the product being incapable to diffuse through the oil phase. So, it remains entrapped there. Okay. So, this is a uh, you know type 1 facilitation process. In type 2 facilitation process and this type 1 facilitation we just discussed in the case of removal of phenol by using an inner phase loaded with sodium hydroxide. in type 2 facilitation diffusion of species are carried out across the membrane phase by incorporating a carrier compound okay, or complexing agent present in the oil phase. In this case the diffusion will occur let us say this is the emulsion globule. Okay. 
now the solute is present. Now, in the oil phase or in the membrane phase, we use one carrier or a compound. Okay. One carrier is used. This carrier makes a complex with solute. Okay. So, this complex will, will be diffusing through the oil phase and it gets into the inner phase. Okay. And in, a, in the inner phase, the complex breaks down and the, the um, solute will be moving into the inner phase and the complex comes out to the oil phase. So, it maintains the composition of the oil phase and then this solute will be in the inner phase, it will react with, uh, with another uh, internal agent. So, the concentration of gradient becomes maximum. But what is the facilitation? The, it, it will be, it, this process will be faster. Why it will be faster? Because whenever you will be forming a, uh, a, um, the, a complex of the solute with the carrier, the concentration difference between the external phase and the oil phase will be maximum because there is no concentration, there is no free solute present in the oil phase. So, we maximizing, we are maximizing the concentration difference of the driving force in two places. One is across the oil external phase junction, this is the external phase. At the oil external phase boundary, we are maximizing the solute concentration because in, in the internal, in the carrier phase, in the oil phase, the carrier plus internal, uh, carrier plus the solute makes a complex. So, the solute concentration will be 0 there. So, it is basically the complex. Okay. So, more solutes will be diffusing through it. So, we are, we are making a maximum concentration, maintaining a maximum concentration gradient there. Now, once this carrier will, will, will get into touch of the internal phase, it releases the solute and it immediately reacts with the solute. So, therefore, we are maintaining again a maximum concentration difference there. So, it is the type 2 facilitation process. So, will be, so in the, what is the difference between the type 2 facilitation process and type 1 facilitation process? In type 2 facilitation process, we have a facilitator or a carrier present in the membrane phase or in the oil phase that makes a complex with the solute and, uh, and transports the solute towards the internal phase more easily. It facilitates the transport of the solute towards the internal phase. Okay. Right. So, you will be having the reaction. So, there are two re the reactions takes place take place at external phase, external inter external interface between external and membrane phase. I am talking about this boundary. Okay. This is the boundary we are talking about, the first reaction will occur. So, this reaction takes place, let us talk about the zinc, okay, transport of the Zn plus plus. So, this is the solute Zn plus 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 2 HR. HR is an, an organic, it is a carrier organic Zn R2 plus 2 H plus. Okay. This reaction takes place. So, zinc was in the aqueous phase or the external phase and HR is the carrier or it is an organic phase. This is a carrier present in the oil phase. This reacts with the zinc and produces a complex and releases protons. Okay. This, this is also organic phase and this is the aqueous phase. Okay. Now, what is a typical uh, carrier compound? A typical carrier, com com carrier compound is called DEFA. D2 EHPA, it is a big name and this, re, this forms a complex with the zinc. And we have denoted this complex as ZnR2. Okay. Now, this zinc complex diffuses through the internal phase to the to the to the um, uh, through the oil phase to the internal phase, right. This complex diffuses across the membrane phase to internal phase and internal phase contains sulfuric acid solution. 
the internal phase contains sulfuric acid. Now, so there will be another reaction occurs at the interface of internal and oil phase or the membrane phase. Okay. So, another reaction occurs. across membrane and internal phase. What is the reaction? The reaction will be Z n R 2 plus 2 H plus going into Z n plus 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 2 H R. So, again it is an organic phase okay? and this is an aqueous phase, this is in aqueous phase and this is organic phase. So, you get back your H R, okay. so you, uh, the, the carrier medium, okay, the carrier compound and it will remain in the, in the, in the oil phase or in the membrane phase. Okay. So, concentrated acid now in internal phase strip Z n from the membrane phase to becomes Z n plus plus ion and donates proton to the extractant in the membrane phase. So, once it donates the proton to the membrane phase, you get back your carrier medium and zinc will be going into the internal phase. Okay. So, one can get back, now one can uh, destabilize the, you, you can separate out the emulsion and you can break the emulsion, but you can use simply a filter paper because the emulsion globules will be having a size in the order of let us say 1000 micron. Okay. You use, use a simple filter paper and separate out the emulsion, then break down the emulsion and get back your uh, uh, pollutant separately, pollutant and internal phase separately. Okay. So, uh, concentrated uh, the, the acid interna, in the internal phase drives the stripping reaction. to the right and maintain a low concentra low concentrated zinc complex ZnR2 what it means that since the protons are present in the in the internal phase in in at a higher quantity because it is basically an acid solution so it drives the reaction towards the right okay so so at the internal phase this concentration will be absolutely low and you will be getting back your hr and the zinc will be walking into the internal phase okay so in the first reaction we have the separation in the second reaction we have the stripping or extraction so if you would like to write down the a driving force curve in type 2 type type 2 facilitation this is the fit or the external phase containing the react uh, you know pollutant let's say zinc plus plus it forms H R there, the H R will be and, and this is let us say the H plus profile and it forms H R there. So, this is H R profile okay, and it donates protons in the receiving phase or the inner phase. or inner phase and you will be having a membrane phase here okay, that is the oil phase and this A plus 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 will react with H R and it produces a complex of let us say A R 2. This complex will be having a higher concentration at the interface because here there is no H R. So, there is no presence of A R 2 there and this will then diffuse through the membrane phase and it releases a plus plus into the inner phase. That is the typical driving force diagram in a type 2 facilitation process. So, there are the 
transport of the pollutant is being facilitated by a by complexing with a carrier compound present in the oil phase. And this complex diffuses through the oil phase or the membrane phase, it goes into the inner phase and releases the uh, another reaction takes place and releases there the pollutant into the internal phase and it will be stripped and concentrated within the internal phase that is the principles. Now, the let us write down the advantage of liquid membrane of emulsion liquid membrane. Here the most uh, the, the first and the, uh, uh, the strongest advantage is we have the simultaneous extraction and stripping. in one step only. Okay. Next, we will look into a schematic of continuous ELM process. First, we have the internal phase, uh, you, you, you produce the, you do emulsification. Okay. You add the membrane phase that means the oil phase put the membrane phase or oil phase then you add internal phase do a high stirring what is what is the result? The result is you will be producing the emulsions. Okay, you will be producing the emulsion globules. These emulsions will be trapping. It will be will be containing various small droplets of inner phase. Okay, then this emulsion is taken out and it is fed into the dispersion uh, phase or the external phase. Here the dispersion or extraction occurs and you add the external phase here. That means, in the first box you, you are carrying out the emulsification, in the second box you are putting the emulsion, emulsions into the external phase only that much. Okay. Now, again this is will be, will be you, you must be having the continuous stirring at a lower stirring speed, so that the emulsions will not be settled in the bottom. Okay. So, you will be having the globules of emulsions having internal droplets with the oil phase along with them. Okay. You will be having the globules of emulsion trapped with the internal phase in the globule in the in the oil phase. Okay. Then once this is done, then you send it to a settler. So, here what happens all the transfer takes place that means, solutes from the external phase it gets transported through the oil phase into the internal phase and then you send this to a settler. This is a settler. So, what, what happens in the settler? In the settler it, 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 it separates into two phases, you will be having the oil rich phase and you will be having the aqueous phase, you will be having the emulsions here. Uh, And you will be having the aqueous phase here. Okay. So, this is called a raffinate, and these emulsions are taken out and it goes to a chamber, it is known as you know demulsification or breaking, okay. Breaking of emulsions, and again it will be having two phases, you will be having a membrane phase and membrane phase will be recirculated to this phase and you will be having an extract phase. Now, in this whole process the raffinate stream 
will be the external phase which external continuous phase which will be devoid of pollutant. So, that, that, that means, this is a final product which is where there is no pollutant present almost negligible amount of pollutant present. On the other hand in the extraction in the in the extract phase in the extract phase in the emulsion uh, that you get after the emulsion breaking in the extract phase contains the whole of pollutant present in a concentrated manner. So, you separate out the pollutants from the raffinate uh, into the raffinate phase and get an get a concentrated version of the pollutant in the extractant phase. Okay. So, that is how a continuous emulsion liquid membrane system will occur. Now, okay, in the next what we will see we will try to model the mass transfer of this system emulsion liquid membrane system. Uh, and first we will talk about a batch extraction process. And we will be talk talking about the type 1 facilitation. So, there is only one internal phase which contains the reactor that reacts with um, uh, you know reactant that reacts with the uh, the pollutant that will be diffusing through the oil phase. We are not assuming there is another facilitator present in the oil phase that produces a complex with the uh, with the pollutant. Okay. So, then the main transport that um, involves transport mechanism that involves in the type 1 facilitation is diffusion. Is nothing but a diffusion mechanism. And a spherical shell approach is taken to model this system. This is known as a spherical shell approach, uh, and there are the the various salient features of this model are listed. First, solute A from external phase solute A is the pollutant either you know heavy metal ions or cations from uh, in external phase diffuses to the internal phase and after reaction it becomes P. Okay. The solute A reacts, it, 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 it diffuses through the membrane phase, goes into the internal phase, you have the reactant present there, it reacts with that and produces the complex, let us say sodium phenolate, sodium phenolate is termed as B. And the, and the, this, this whole process will be associated with a mass transfer coefficient, let us say K times a K A, subs, K, uh, subscript A with an effective mass transfer coefficient K A. Okay. The second step is that B diffuses to diffuses through uh, diffuses to the external phase. So, there are two that B can also diffuse to the external phase. In some cases, in most of the cases, it is it is not soluble in the oil phase. So, it, it, it the its diffusion is barred, it is prevented, it is encapsulate within the internal phase. But in general, we can say that B, diff, B can diffuse to the external phase via through me two mechanism. Via number one, number one is uh, the diffusion. I am talking about the, the complex that is coming out of the out through the oil phase to the external phase by diffusion and second is via breakage of emulsion. Okay. So, these are the only two mechanism by which the complex can come out of the come out to the external phase and the breakage of emulsion is always possible because 
when the the all the emulsions are not always stable some of them some fraction of them will be always you know breaking at, uh, at the same time and in the external phase when the ex internal phase comes to the external phase in external phase b can get converted to let's say original uh, pollutant a okay does a can exist only in internal phase a can exist only in external phase right so there is no a anywhere it can be it can exist in its form only in the external phase and b can exist b is the complex so it can exist only in internal phase and in internal phase the reaction occurs the reaction will be naoh plus phenol giving you phenolate okay so can have a typical schematic this is an emulsion globule this is the internal phase uh, internal reagent that is b and what is b b is nothing but naoh okay and you will be having uh, the pollutant is present let's say this is phenol this external reagent or external phase okay so a moves from external phase it goes through the membrane phase it comes to the internal phase that is the first one then it reacts with b or naoh and this uh, this complex it diffuses back to the external phase and reacts with h2so4 present in the external phase and gives you back a okay so this mass transfer will be via through mass transfer coefficient ka and this mass transfer takes place via a mass transfer coefficient kb okay so that is the general form but typically this external phase this, uh, the 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 complex that is formed in the internal phase it is not soluble to to the oil phase and it remains there it cannot come out there okay but this is a general type of equation that we are talking about because you can you can you can have a mismatch of k and kb k may be 100 times larger compared to kb that means the rate by which the solute will be moving into the internal phase will be much much faster or higher compared to that the rate of the internal the complex that comes out from the internal phase to the external phase so this will this will be a slowest step this will be a faster step now let us talk about the breakage of emulsion internal phase and we assume that the minus dvi dt will be proportional to v, uh, vi that means the breakage or the loss of um, internal phase as a function of time rate of loss of internal phase is proportional to the volume of the internal phase that means more be the internal phase more will be the breakage less will be the internal phase less will be the breakage so therefore the, the uh, minus dvi dt is nothing but the rate of loss of rate of rate of reduction of the internal phase volume this is proportional to interface volume internal phase volume and this proportionality constant is known as phi and it is the it is known as the breakage coefficient you can integrate this equation and finally you will be getting vi is equal to vi not exponential minus phi t so internal phase volume at any point of time will be given as the initial internal phase volume this vi not is initial internal phase volume
multiplied by exponential by, uh, my, minus phi t. Okay. The total, so this is the internal phase volume at any point of time t. Total volume is constant, so total volume is written as of the system is v naught is equal to v e naught plus v i naught. Okay. V naught is the total initial volume. This is the total V e naught is the total external phase volume initially external phase volume. This is the total internal phase volume. Both of these are at all these are at time t is equal to 0. Okay. Later on they will be changed and at any point of time you will be having the uh, volume uh, uh, you know conservation will be met point of time you will be having V e plus V i is equal to V naught. Okay. The total volume will be comprised of two things one is the external phase volume one is the internal phase volume. Now, you can combine these things you can you can write V i is equal to V i naught e to the power minus phi t and V e can be expressed as V naught minus V i naught e to the power minus phi t. So, this expression gives you the volume of external phase at any point of time. Now, the in the present case we are considered the example, the example the, uh, that we are considering in the present case is this removal of phenol. So, the external phase has it is it is slightly acidic phenol plus sulfuric acid. That, that, that constitutes the external phase. The internal phase is sodium hydroxide. So, in the internal phase the phenol and sodium hydroxide reacts and it produces sodium phenolate. Now, some amount of sodium phenolate comes out to the external phase through breakage. Okay. Sum of sodium phenolate comes to external phase through breakage and when it comes out to the external phase it reacts with sulfuric acid again to produce phenol and sodium sulfate. Okay. When it comes to the external phase, but that, that amount will be extremely small, it reacts with sulfuric acid. And produces sodium sulfate. plus phenol back. Okay. So, that means, the con concentration of phenol will be will be always constant in the external phase. No, because this breakage itself will be very small. So, the amount of sodium phenolate that is coming out of the internal phase into the external phase that itself will be very small and so, the phenol that is regenerated will be extremely small. So, in the long run the concentration of phenol will be really decreasing in the external phase. So, concentration of A, A means phenol and B is the, comp com the final compound that is produced in internal phase is sodium phenolate. So, concentration of A in internal phase is 0. That means, 
sodium does not exist in the internal phase because it reacts with, uh, uh, with sodium hydroxide and produces the sodium phenolate. So, C i a is equal to 0. So, a exists only in the external phase that simply means a exists only in external phase. Concentration of B in external phase is 0, C E B that means concentration of B in external phase is equal to 0. That means, when the whenever the B that means sodium phenolate comes out to the external phase it reacts to a sulfuric acid and produces sodium sulphate and the phenol back. So, therefore, sodium phenolate does not exist in the external phase. So, the concentration is always 0. Since this concentration is in the external phase is 0, the K B naught is equal to 0 be simply because and the third assumption is the K B naught is equal to K B equal to 0 because the B that is the sodium phenolate is an ionic compound. That means, it is hydrophilic in nature, it does not like the hydrophobic environment of the oil or the membrane phase. So, it cannot diffuse, cannot diffuse through the oil phase. That means, your K B is equal to 0. But some of the sodium phenolate can always come, a small fraction of the sodium phenolate can always come to the external phase via breakage. As, as, as you have seen that we have mentioned two mechanism by which the internal phase come, can come out to the external phase, one is by diffusion number 1 and through the mass transfer coefficient K B and secondly via breakage. So, since the sodium phenolate itself is an ionic compound, it does not like the an, a hydrophobic environment or the oil phase of the membrane. So, therefore, it cannot diffuse through the oil phase. So, it remains there, but it can, some of it can always come back for, to the external phase through the first mechanism that is the breakage. Okay. Okay. Next, we will uh, we'll go to the you know different assumptions and balance equations. So, the governing equations of various species either in the external phase or in the internal phase can be developed if you write down the species balance equation of various species in the internal phase as well as in the external phase. And we will be, we'll be assuming that it is one dimensional um, uh, you know ordinary differential equation because it is a function of time only, we are talking about a batch extraction process only. In fact, in the uh, now in today's class it is not possible to write down all the equations and come to a conclusive solution. So, in the next class what we will be doing, we will write down all the balance equations of various species either in the internal phase and the external phase, then we will try to uh, see the you know it will, it will give, give you give rise to a DIE system, a differential algebraic equation system and we will be able to solve this system almost analytically and can get an analytical solution. Okay. So, so far, uh, so, so in this class we can we have just uh, what we have seen, let me summarize, we have seen the fundamental principles of liquid emulsion membrane system and there are two types of facilitation process one can have that is type 1 and type 2. We have defined the type 1 facilitation process and type 2 facilitation process and we have looked into several types of examples and we have uh, you know for a batch extraction of liquid emulsion membrane, we have uh, uh, discussed various assumptions and various steps those are involved and we are in a position now to write down the species balance equations, so that we can model the whole system and or we can pre uh, predict the performance of system at any point of time in a batch extraction process. Okay. So, we will look into all those details in the next class or the coming class. Thank you very much.